So what, what is the difference between the type of training and courses that your industry offer versus what you would see in academia? Um, <clears throat> that's a good question. I, I think the... I think I think the, the the fundamental difference is, with the exception of the vocational type um, degrees in universities where you're actually learning, you know, something that is 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 applied. And sorry, just in regard to terminology, so what what do you call the type of courses that you offer as a vocational? <clears throat> so no, so if if at university you're talking about vocational, so if that be like something like nursing, it's it's a really applied. Yeah, there's a theory behind okay. it, but it's mm -hmm. really applied. Um, the exception of that, uh, academia is is much more knowledge based. It is, you know, based around theory. Yeah, researching, um, you know, being able to cite that, being able to talk about it, being able to reference it. If you think about, I don't know, history or English as a degree, it's 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 very much focused on, I guess, more of the cerebral activities rather than the application of it. Mm. Um, the type of learning, in a more corporate sense, the sort of L and D sense in the sector that I'm in, is equipping people to be really effective at their jobs, whether that is the technical skills that I've talked about, spoken about, or it's how to manage your team well, how to motivate people, how to how to lead people, um, uh, how, you know, how to how to create organisations that are effective because of because of the strategies and the vision that is in place to to drive the business forward. So it's much more about the application and and getting something to happen in the business that you're in, rather than the acquisition of knowledge. Are these um, services expensive? For the companies, just out of curiosity. Are we, are we, when you ask that question, are you comparing that to degrees or just a general question? I was just, I was just thinking then when you're talking like, yeah, exactly that. Like compared to a degree, obviously it's not going to cost the employee that, but what does it cost potentially the company? So, is it? Is it? It's got to be worth it, obviously, for them because they're upskilling their 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 uh, their employees. But is it? Is it like? Would you have to be a certain size company to be able to afford those sort of services? Probably, yeah. yeah. I would say you probably would. Um, but it's it's something that individuals can just go in and pay for themselves and do it, right? They, they could do, they could do, yeah. So you can get public publicly scheduled courses. Um, but there's a really good quote, and I need to remember who it was who said it. Um, we'll put it in the description at the end, mate. Richard, Richard Branson, I'm going to say Richard Branson, don't he? He says a few things. <laughs> yeah, it says a lot, mate. It says a lot. <laughs> and it's like, um, what, what happens if we develop all our people and they leave? And the response is, what happens if we don't and they stay? Mm. Yeah, and that's, really and that's good, the yeah. point. It's like, okay, do you want it? Do you want the best people? And actually, if you get, if you've got really, you know, great development opportunities in your organisation, you create highly engaged people. There's there's a, there's a great article um, on Harvard Business Review um, called "Putting the Service Profit Chain to Work." Um, five minute read. And it talks about actually, if you have higher employee engagement, they will deliver a better service and you will get increased revenues through that. So actually doing the right thing for your people is also doing the right thing for the business. Yeah, that, 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 yeah it makes sense. It makes sense, doesn't it? It's just um, obviously you have to be a certain size business probably to be able to afford that. Mm -hmm. And then again, financially to be able to pay for that personally would probably be quite an expense. Yeah, you do. And it I'm would be paid for probably in a different way that you would pay for university. So you pay for university through loans and this and that, and right. it's paid through, you know, everyone knows kind of how student loans work, yeah. but then that would be slightly different. Yeah. So I was thinking, of, I was thinking about that. And, and, and I guess in regard to our industry, so fitness, mm -hmm. you have, and to be a personal trainer, you can just do a level three personal training course. And it's shit. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you could be, you know, you could have a master's degree in sports science. So there's a huge disparity between the, the, the range of qualification that you're able to obtain to do the same role. And and I think to savvy people, they'll ask for credentials and qualifications. And, and that, for some people, may direct them in regard to who they go with. But certainly within personal training, because a lot of it is based around sort of working with people and inspiring people and coaching, you know, those qualifications, you know, the degrees don't always transfer that well. Because if it's a sports science degree, yeah, it teaches you the underpinning physiology and anatomy and everything else, yeah. but it doesn't teach you the people skills. No. It doesn't teach you the ability to actually get clients. To sell, to sell it to anyone. You yeah. Know? And, yeah. And it certainly doesn't give you the ability to inspire people to make change in their life. So for me, to some extent, you know, I've got both, but I, I almost feel like I, you know, my degree was great, but actually some of the applied experience that I've got, which Absolutely. I could have got with that basic qualification has been more valuable. Yeah. 
Um, so my question was that based on that from, from I guess, an organ- organizational point of view, do companies value that type of training and applied experience as much as a degree or, or more than a degree, would you say? I think that's going to vary a lot on the sector. You know, there are some, obviously there are some industries that you need to work and you have to have the degree, right? So let's let's discount some of those because yeah. you're not going to become an engineer without an engineering yeah, degree sure, or equivalent sure level of qualification. Um, Maybe just apply it to your sector. So, so for me or in my own experience, not having had that, has not held me back at all. Um, you know, working for organisations that have great learning and development offering, um, understanding what it is, taking responsibility for my own learning and progressing myself, um, that's what's, you know, that's what's been recognised. And so I have not, I don't feel I've been remotely held back by not having a degree. Yeah. Have you ever felt pressure to do that though? To yeah, get a degree? I, I, like, yeah, yeah has there been times where you thought, oh, I may not be getting a promotion here or I may not be able to mm. go further without getting the degree? you kind of obviously navigated that somehow, but there, I imagine there are certain certain jobs where probably a lot of the um, people that are high in the chain have degrees, have this, have that. And then you look at them and think, oh, you know, I'm going to have to go and get a degree to, to maybe get that promotion. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a really good point. And yeah, I have absolutely felt that pressure. Um, you know, you, you get to a certain level and you, you know, you can start to feel a bit of imposter syndrome. It's like, you know, shit, why am I here? How am mm. I actually here? Uh, and I've looked at, you know, doing, um, I was looking at doing an MBA. Um, I was looking at what's, doing... What's an MBA? So a master's in business administration. So mm-hmm. it's one of the most um, typical one that sort of people in business do as, as a, from a degree point of view. Mm-hmm. It's about 17K for a start. So I'm like, okay, that's that's a lot. Yeah, so what's that's that, a three, three year degree? Um, Four? Do you know what? 17k and then C. Yeah, do not pass that. <laughs> it is, like, yeah. was and then C, three, no. four, five, it don't matter. <laughs> yeah. and then, but then also seeing the amount of like work that's required to do that. Yeah. And then working the hours that I work, and I do work, you know, long hours a lot of the time. I was just like, yeah, that that's just not going to happen. I'm not going to be able to do both. Um, but I have felt that. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, yeah. But then, then you actually look at you know it's, where does where does some of my credibility come from? It comes from the experience of having done it. It comes from how I've informed my my point of view from you know non academic learning. So actually, you, you know, understanding what what good leadership actually is, what um, how to design programs, how to deliver all of those kind of things, which are built in my experience, means that when I'm having conversations with my clients and I can talk about my point of view, it, I've got the credibility to do that. Would a degree validate that? Yeah, probably. Um, are there other qualifications that I could get that would also validate it? Absolutely. Um, so that's more where I'd be looking to go. Because actually now it's more about, I guess, for me, having that sense of validation rather than actually needing the qualification itself. Yeah. So you, you'd only really be doing it for your own personal development, really, just to maybe yeah. further your own knowledge in something. or. Yeah. But you, you may not, at the point you're at now, maybe maybe you don't need it. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. So my just because I'm not going down a formal learning route doesn't mean that my learning stops. So yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, and, and again, this is where I would encourage people. There is endless information out there. There's endless learning that for free for people you know you don't actually have to pay for a lot of learning there is there really are, yeah there's oh, lots right. of organizations that um if, if you want to find something out you just need to know what you're looking for yeah. think about uh, all the stuff you can find on youtube right if i if i want to um if i wanted to change a light bulb on a car and i didn't know how to i'll go on youtube and i'll find out yeah. how to do it so yeah. i can equip myself with something i'd have no knowledge of. i don't need to then go and watch the next you know hour about how to strip down the whole engine i just need to know what i need to know for that time so learning and choosing to to choosing to keep yourself current is available to everyone if you're prepared to do it